No one supports the view that civilians lose their protection against attacks only during the military engagement itself. Even the RCRC, who adopts a restrictive interpretation of the duration of time where a participating civilian may be targeted, agrees that measures preparatory to the execution of a specific act of direct participation in hostilities, as well as the deployment to and the return from the location of its execution, constitute an integral part of that act. However, the RCRC does not extend the loss of protection beyond that. Civilians therefore recover their protection against attack after each act of direct participation, even if they intend to prepare for another act. This approach has been criticized as creating a revolving door effect, which encouraged the well-known practice of being a farmer during the day and a fighter during the night. Some scholars therefore support a more extensive view. In case of repetition of acts of direct participation in hostilities, civilians should lose their protection even during the intermediate periods between the specific acts until such a time that they unambiguously opt out through extended non-participation or an affirmative act of withdrawal. Another related approach is to consider that in so far as civilians are members of a group that exists for the purpose of engaging in hostilities and remain civilians, they must be considered as participating in hostilities throughout the duration of their membership and they are therefore targetable during that time, including when they are not actively engaged in hostilities. Both approaches actually support a continuous direct participation in hostilities. This is highly contentious. This leads to blurring the distinction between civilians who can be targeted only for such a time as they directly take part to the hostilities and members of armed forces who can be targeted at any time. In other words, this leads to blurring the cardinal distinction between civilians and non-civilians in the law of targeting. Let's now analyze who are those non-civilians, first in non-international armed conflict and then in international armed conflicts.